But today we're going to focus on the half angles, the half angle identities. Okay, so emphasis on this part today. Uh, so the half angle identities actually come from the double angle identities. So do you guys remember how we got these red formulas here? Where did these come from, the red ones? Where did they come from? changed all of these to A's just to see what would happen. And we ended up with things like cos 2A equals blah, blah, blah. We construct all these formulas. Okay? So now we're going to have to take these red ones and then develop three new ones. Okay? And we're going to have a sine of theta over 2, and a cosine of theta over 2, and a tan of theta over 2 formula. And the power of those are if you have an angle, right? And let's say you happen to know the cosine's a half, you would be able to predict what half of the angle is cosine of theta. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started on it. So let's just take our formulas from yesterday. Sine of twice an angle is 2 sine times cosine. And cosine of 2 times an angle is cosine squared minus sine squared. And tan twice an angle is 2 tan over 1 minus tan squared. Okay? So you knew these formulas because you used them last night. But let's talk about what they really mean. Like what in the world is this talking about? Right? Here's the, here's the basic idea. Hopefully you learned early in trigonometry that if you have, let's say, a 60 degree angle, right? You probably knew that the cosine is a half and the sine is root 3 over 2. So we're assuming this is the unit circle. Right? But you probably realize pretty quick that if you double the angle, that does not double the sine or the cosine. Right? When you double the angle, you get 120. <coughs> But you can't get the coordinates by doubling. Like, you don't double these numbers to get the new coordinates, right? That's not how it works. In other words, sine of 30 degrees is not exactly the same as 2 times sine of 15 or something. This is not how things work. It's all nonlinear. So these actually have their own coordinates, you know, negative half and root 3 over 2. But what this is up here is a true connection between an angle and its double. Okay, for example, even if we had a generic angle like 4 degrees, right, and you wanted to study 8 degrees, you wanted to know what sine and cosine of 8 degrees was, what we're saying is that if you want sine of 8 degrees, that's just 2 times sine of 4 degrees times cosine 4 degrees. They're related in, through the formula. That's the relationship. On the other hand, if you happen to know, you know, what um, tan of 4 degrees is, you could find tan of 8 degrees by doing 2 times tan of 4 degrees over 1 minus tan squared of 4 degrees. Maybe when you were a young child, you memorized tan of 4, and then you got really curious and wondering what tan of 8 was. But you never calculated. You could use this. How many of you, when you were young, memorized what the tangent of 4 degrees was? Okay, so, but you see my point? Yeah. And then once you figure out what tan of 8 is, you can then double that to figure out what tan of 16 is. But you'd have to follow the formula. Okay? So there must certainly be a way to work backwards and find half of something. For example, we know what cosine 30 is. Most of us. But what is cosine 15? Well, you can use 45. Okay, we do have a rule for that. How about cosine of 45? We all know what that is? Yeah. Root 2 over 2? What's cosine of 22 and a half? Today's formulas will tell us that. So then, in other words, you can find any angle if you know a special angle. If you know a, a cosine, you can find the cosine of half of that angle. So you can do 22 and a half. Then you plus from the same thing. You can end up with any angle. Well, we have to be careful saying any angle. Be, by doing halves, 
uh, we, we can't produce angles like 5 degrees, right? Because we only have uh, 30 degrees to work with and 45 degrees to work with. So we could do like half of those. We could do like 15 degrees, 22 and a half degrees. We have 135 on the unit circle. We could do 67 and a half degrees using today's formulas. We could find sine, cosine, tan. Okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the formulas, not all of them, but the formulas from this previous page, and I'm just going to change 2 theta to theta. And then the thetas will become half thetas. In other words, I'm going to divide all the angles by 2. Okay? So watch what happens on the... Uh, the first formula. So if I take uh, sine of 2 theta equals 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta, and I get in here and I very sneakily change this to a theta, then I'm going to have to change these angles to half thetas. This is still a true statement. Sine of theta is twice times sine Same rule, I'm just using theta instead of 2 theta. Okay, this one's kind of a dead end. I don't really know what to do with this. I was kind of hoping to isolate sine of theta over 2. But if I do that, I'm going to have a cosine theta over 2 in my answer. So I'm going to abandon this and try a different one. How about this one? There was one that looked like this from yesterday. Let's try that trick on this one. I'm going to change this to theta. Okay, and I'm going to change the theta to a theta over 2. Okay, now I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And divide by 2. And square root, right. If I square root this... I get that formula in the book. They actually put 1 plus cosine. Maybe you saw this formula last night when you're working. This is just straight out of the book. But what this thing is, is a way for us to find, let's say, cosine of 22 and a half degrees. Okay? All right. So that's a brand new formula. Let's put it on our whiteboard. Okay, so it's cosine theta over 2 is plus or minus 1 plus cosine theta all the way This means if you know cosine theta, you can find cosine of half of theta using that formula. All right? Let's try the same thing with a different formula. Yesterday, we also had this formula on the board. Oops. Cosine of 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. This was one of the many that I wrote yesterday. Let's take, did I just do that one? I just did that one. Let's do the other version of it. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. This was on the board yesterday. Let's play the same game with this. So this would be cosine, and then we'll just make this a theta now, like that. And then 1 minus 2 sine squared, and this will be a theta over 2. Just dividing the angle in half. Okay, I'm going to subtract 1. Divide by negative 2. Okay, and then... Uh, I'm going to rewrite the top on the left. I'm going to write it as 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. It looks a little nicer. And then I'll square root both sides. So plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cos theta all over 2 is the sine half angle rule. So let's put that on the board. So it looks almost exactly like what I just had. Only it has a minus Pretty much the same exact rule. Looks like it anyway. Now what about tangent? 
Well, you might expect me to go now and look at the tan 2 theta formula to design a tan half theta formula. The problem with this is if I change this over here to a theta, and this to a theta over 2, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble here. Try and isolate tan and theta over 2. Because you end up, it's a quadratic ugliness scenario. So I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to cheat and divide my two answers for sine and cosine up here. I'm going to divide these two to create a new formula for tan. Okay? It is cheating in a way, but not really. Okay, so to get tan of theta over 2, we will use the fact that tan theta over 2 would be the sine half angle formula over the cosine half angle formula. Okay? This is just the truth. The tangent of any angle is always sine over the angle divided by the cosine of that angle, even if it's a theta over 2, unless the bottom is 0 or something. But let's go ahead and try it anyway. Let's take our two formulas and stack them. So we have this one on top. And this one on the bottom. That's awkward. Why don't we just put everyone under one happy square root? So let's just do one big fat plus or minus square root. like that. And then the twos cancel out. Oops, I meant to draw them here. Bam, bam. And this is what the book offers as a formula for tan half angle. It looks like this. Plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine over 1 plus cosine. sure what the answer is until we think a little more. Okay, so we're going to have to choose between plus and minus on all these horrible formulas. I don't really like that formula. Let me show you a faster and better one, okay? If you think of this as plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine over the square root of 1 plus cosine, you can try to get rid of the radical on the bottom by using a conjugate like this. You do not have to memorize what I'm doing right now. You might want to just memorize the end result of it. Okay, what happens is you get this on top. 1 minus cosine theta squared inside a radical. And on the bottom, you get 1 minus cosine squared theta inside the radical. Okay. And then the top, of course is the square root of a perfect square, so you just get this. You don't need the radical. This cancels out, in other words. And the bottom, that should look familiar. Isn't that just sine squared? 1 minus cosine squared? Okay, so this gives me plus or minus 1 minus cosine theta all over sine theta. And for reasons I won't go into right now, the plus or minus is obsolete. It's not even necessary. I'm not going to go into the reasons for it. Isn't this a lot better than what I had a minute ago? That's so much better. So our formula, I prefer this, you guys, 1 minus cosine all over sine. This is so much better. This was too hard to use. How about that? Much better. There's no plus or minus. There's no square root. OK, beautiful. There's even another way to write it if you want. You can also use this if you wish. Uh, sine theta over 1 plus cos theta. It's the same thing. Now that we have our new formulas, we're going to go ahead and try a problem. So this one you can also do. For those watching the video, you can use that instead. But those, those are nicer. They don't have the radical or the plus or minus. 
The only thing I don't have time to explain right now is that plus or minus, how it disappeared. But let's move on. So basically for 10, we need to do the cosine for both formulas first. We want the no, you get to use this brand new one in green. This thing is the fastest of the three. In fact, all, of all the new formulas today, these are the simplest. Interesting, tan is the simplest. Every day there's one formula that's the simplest. Yesterday it was sine 2 theta. Today it's uh, tan half angle. So, all right. That is the end of new identities, okay? What you see here, the purples, the blues, the reds, the greens, all of that will be typed up and given to you tomorrow on a handout. You've got to memorize them all. It's the unit circle, it's the three identities. You've got to know it really well. Memorize them exactly, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and try a problem real quick. So what would happen if I said... Suppose sine of theta is negative 3 fifths and pi is less than theta is less than 3 pi over 2. What does this little part at the end mean again? It's between 180, between 180 and 270. So this is just a fancy way to say quadrant 3, right? We talked about that. Okay, so why don't we draw a quick sketch of this. So we're in quadrant 3. There is this point. It's got a y coordinate of negative 3. It's got a r value of 5. I think I'm done doing the Pythagorean theorem for this scenario. What's the x, guys? Four. four. Careful. Negative 4. Negative 4. We're in quadrant uh, 3 here, right? So if you don't mind, I'm going to skip the steps on that. I'll just put pt here, which means Pythagorean theorem. That's how we got that. OK, now, this is our angle. And let's say you want to find sine of theta over 2. Okay, how would you do that? It's just a formula. We're going to use our new green formula. So it's on the board there. It was plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine theta all over 2. It requires exactly one ingredient, cosine theta. That's all you need. Well, look at the picture. What's cosine theta? No. Negative four fifths, right? So just stick that guy in there and simplify it to finish. So this is plus or minus the square root of, this is one plus four fifths, which is nine fifths, all over two. So this just gives us plus or minus the square root of nine tenths. Or you could do plus or minus 3 over rad 10. Or rationalizing, it's plus or minus 3 root 10 over 10. I trust you can do those steps yourself with algebra 1. Now, you can't have two answers. Sine's a function. You can't have two answers. So we have to decide which one makes more sense, positive or negative. So this is the only tricky part, guys. Watch. If theta is an angle in quadrant 3, then we know it's an angle between 180 and what? 270. 270, right? So if theta is between 180 and 270, and we want to discuss the half angle, then theta over 2 is between what two angles? 90 and 135. Which quadrant is that? This is quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, sine, which is what we're solving right now. We're doing a sine problem, see? Sine is what? Positive. Right. So we're going to go with the positive answer. I'm going to write a little note why I'm picking this. Because... Theta over 2 is in quadrant 2. That's how I decide between positive and negative. Okay, okay if I had asked you to do cosine, you would use the cosine formula. If I would asked you to do tangent, you would use the tangent formula. You'll notice that the third formula, the way I wrote them, do not require you to decide on plus or minus. These formulas work that out on their own. So these formulas are really nice. If you decide to use the book formula here, you'll have to decide if the angle between this and that, and decide what answer to get.
We can use y and then you don't have to worry about signs at all. S I G N. Let's take a one question quiz today. Half sheet.